praise is due to Allah. Not some of the praise and not most of the praise, but all of the praise That's right. That's belongs right. to Allah. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that irregardless to land, language, or label, creed, class, or color, race, religion, or ritual, that there is but one God. That's right. We thank that one God for all of his messengers, his warners, and his prophets. We thank him for Jesus, for Moses. That's right. We thank him for Muhammad. However, we also thank Allah God not only for those great messengers and prophets that came to predict the great future and legacy of the black man and woman of North America, but we will be remiss in our duty if we didn't thank that same God for some of those soldiers that came to fulfill what the prophets predicted. All right. Such soldiers that need our honor and deserve our salute are soldiers like Nat Turner, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Denmark Vesey, yes, Gabriel Prosser, yes, Marcus Mosiah Garth, yes, Noble Dre Ali, W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick Dutch, Malcolm X, yes, sir. Harriet Tubman. Yes, That's right. Did I say Nat Turner? Yes, yes sir. Well, I'm going to say it again. I'm just in the spirit, you know. Come on, man. Uh, we need some Nat Turner spirit right now. <laughs> We thank him for Sojourner Truth and Madam C.J. Walker. Yeah. We thank him for Mary McLeod Bethune. We thank yeah. him for all of these great brothers and sisters that not only they didn't predict, but they fulfilled what prophets predicted. We thank them for striking a blow for freedom for you and me. Yes. Were it not for them, we wouldn't be here today. Yes. Martin Luther King Jr. That's right. That's right. We don't want to leave the great soldier out. That's right. And as a student and follower of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, I can never thank Almighty God Allah enough for his intervention in our affairs in the person of a man named Master Farad Muhammad and for his coming to North America from Saudi Arabia and teaching and training a man that, in my humble opinion, is the baddest black man that ever lived other than God himself. Come I'm on. talking about a Georgia-born black That's man right. by the name of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank that. We can clap for that. Beautiful, beautiful black man right there. Were it no Elijah Muhammad, there never would have been a Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. Were there no Elijah Muhammad, there never would have been a Wolf Dean Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Were there no Elijah Muhammad, there never would have been a Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. Were there no Elijah Muhammad, there wouldn't even have been a Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party's original name was the Sons of Malcolm. Well, how could they be the sons of Malcolm if Malcolm wasn't the son of Elijah Muhammad? Come on. So we thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And today, we are eternally grateful to Almighty God, Allah, for a man that if we study his personage, we will find some Harriet Tubman in him. That's we'll right. find some Moses and Jesus in him. We'll see some Dr. King, some Malcolm X, and we see Elijah Muhammad in him. And that man is the man that taught me everything that I know. And is the example of the man that I hope to one day become. I'm talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's right. It's a man that is all great. You know, we can't thank God for the great national warriors that we mentioned that have gone before and not thank Allah God for these great local warriors that we have on this panel today. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and these spiritual giants that are up here today helping to make Dayton, Ohio a strong place for us to live in that we can fight our enemy and establish something good for self. I want to, before I begin, to thank a special brother that is in our midst today. I don't know if we realize how great of a soldier that you all have in the great student minister here, Brother Tyrone Muhammad. What a great, great brother. A man that doesn't have false pride. He doesn't let his ego get in the way. If you are part of whatever you are part of, he never turns you down, nor talks down. That's right. That's he right. never reaches away or turns his back, but he's always there and he's always reaching out. That shows you the great spiritual maturity that you have in such a leader like Brother Tyrone Muhammad. Thank you so much, Brother Tyrone. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to say to everyone here 
that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan sends his love and greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We'll do, we'll do. If anybody looking around at us thinking something wrong with us for what we just did, <laughs> well, ain't nothing wrong with us, but there's something wrong with you if you got a problem with it. That's all right. That's the last right. I checked, right here in Dayton, Ohio, come on. when that no good ham sandwich eating judge walks out, right. come on, wait. Come on now. Right. What do they say? All rise. All rise. Yeah. And then they got the nerve to say the honorable judge so and so now present. Well, five come more honorable than any judge in the And he's more worthy than the Supreme Court for over 60 years. Tonight, brothers and sisters, for the few moments we have left together with one another, we want to take on a subject titled Black Love Matters. Of course, as we all know or should know, there's a great theme, a mantra that is reverberating within the black community. And it's a hashtag that has become a really a universal cry to stand for self. That's right. And that mantra is black lives matter. That's right. Whether we agree with all of the organizational ingredients of those who are with pushing behind, etc. Reality is, is that Black Lives Matter is a noble, honorable, principle, divine reminder. That's right. That not only needs to be said to the police department and yeah. the white people in government, That's but right. even bigger than them, we need to say it to one another. What do y'all think? That's right. All praise. And for the record. We did not say when we said black lives matter that only black lives matter. That's right. Come on with it. Did y'all hear me? Yes. Now we yes. said black lives matter. You say, but well, but 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 all lives matter. Yes, that is true with God. But that ain't been true with the police department. Come on with it. That hasn't been true with the judges. Right. That hasn't been true with the prosecutors. That hasn't been true. True with the elected officials. Right. The right. reason why we said black lives matter is not to take away from anybody else's life. That's right. But we had to make it known that we love our children, white folks, like you love y'all. Right. And we want all respect like you want yours respect. It's obvious that they've already recognized in the court and inside of the squad cars that white lives matter. That's right. Because there are no white Trayvon Martins. That's right. Huh? Exactly. There are no Walter Scotts. There is no white Sandra Bland. Right. You've never heard of a 13-year-old white girl named Becky or Muffy swimming in Texas. Come on. Huh? And all of a sudden, big black burly police officers <laughs> Come on. decide to take her and throw her on the ground and get on top of her back. But it happened to one of our little black teenagers in McKinney, Texas. That's right. Last I checked, there never has been a black man walk up inside of a white church uh -oh. and Come pray with some white Christians and shoot all nine of them. Mm. But it did happen to us in Charleston, South Carolina. Right. When the math is done, when you look at Trayvon Martin, he is a black man killed for walking while being black. Mm, come on. When you look in South Carolina and see Walter Scott, he is a black man killed for running while being black. Is that right? Right. When you go across the road to Cleveland, Ohio, and look at a 12-year-old little boy named Tamir Rice, come he's on. killed for playing while being black. Right. Here, our little sister is, she's harassed and oppressed for swimming while being black. Yeah. Come on, now, brother. in Charleston, South Carolina, you had nine of ours killed for praying while being black. Come on, brother. But hell, if we can't walk, we can't swim, we can't run, we can't play, we can't even pray yeah. while being black, it's a need for us to tell the world that black lives matter. Come on, brother. What do y'all think? <laughs> oh, please, you a lot. Now, of course, whenever we said Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. naturally, people kept saying, well, 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 wait a minute, you know, I understand that Black Lives Matter, but, but black people kill black people too. <laughs> and you know what, keeping it real, they got a point. Mm -hmm. Do you know, brothers and sisters, as Brother Tyrone was beautifully laying down the statistics for Dayton, Ohio, 
Did you know as a national average that in a three year cycle, two to 3,000 black males are killed by police officers or correctional officers? That's bad. But you know what's worse? In that same three year cycle, 25,000 black males were killed by other black males. Right. So right. yeah, we, we, we got to send a hashtag Black Lives Matter to the White House, mm -hmm. but we also need to send one to the Trap House too. That's right. Huh? We can't afford to stand up and protest white supremacy and then sit on our hands when it comes to negativity. Right. Right. I think that's what I said. Come on. <laughs> that negative. What I say? I said it right. The elder said I said it. No, no, I know negativity ain't a dictionary, but you know what I was talking about. Didn't you? It may not be a dictionary, but it's a real principle. See, negativity is a special type of negative only black people do to one another. Come on, man. See, it's negativity to blame the white man for 95% of our problems, but still spend 97% of our money.
let Tyrone go, go to jail for the rest of his life. Right. right. Sorry, Brother Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> but when Officer McGillicut right. killed 19-year-old unarmed Ray Ray, yeah, right. Right. not only does he not go to jail, he don't even get prosecuted. Exactly. In fact, he get paid administrative leave. Exactly. Next thing you know, he got a book deal and making millions of dollars in the private sector, never serving no time in jail. So we've got a right to be a little bit upset. Exactly. When the Blue Klux Klan continue to keep, I mean the exactly. police department. Exactly. Continue to shoot us down. That's right. That's right. Oh, and that is what they have become, brothers That's and right. sisters. That's right. That we had a chance earlier today to speak to young black men in third good. Marshall High School, and we told the young brothers something that they weren't aware of. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that there are more black males born than there are black females in America? But by the time the two reach the age 18, black females outnumber black males seven to one. Come on. That means that the black male is dying at the rate of an endangered species. Right. And when you look on television, you will find that they have organizations and programs and telethons and fundraisers to make sure the koala bear and the bald eagle and the white tiger and the blue whale don't go extinct. Come on. Yet there ain't nothing been set up to make sure the black male doesn't go extinct. Did you know, brothers and sisters? that whenever you find a species that has become endangered on the brink of extinction, there's never been a species that has become endangered unless that species is, in fact, being hunted. Come on with it. So if the black male has reached the level of an endangered species, somebody's hunting us. That means we are being killed through immunization shots. Right. We are being killed through miseducation in the public food system, in school systems. Come on with it. We are being killed by police officers. That's right. And we are being killed by our own brothers and sisters. That's right. So it is officially a state of emergence yeah. for the black community. That's right. Because where there are no black men, you don't have a pillar or a standard bearer right. by which a community can't even exist. Y'all right. all right? So we at war whether we know it or not. For the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, such a great and wise teacher, he gave us a simple formula that will stop all black on black homicide, right. black That's on black right. crime, Go black ahead, on man. black drug dealing, black on black pedophilia, black on black abuse of women. All black problems will be solved by this simple formula that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad laid out. Y'all ready for this? Come on with it. He, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, said this. He said, knowledge of self produces love for self. And love for self causes you to do for yourself. And since this is my brother, that is my brother. You are my brother. If you drop the first two letters of brother, it becomes other. You are my other self. So if I know me and love me and am doing right by me, I'm going to treat my other me the same way. It's hard right. to shoot your other self. Oh. It's hard to sell dope to your other self. It's hard to rob your other self. So knowledge of self is what produces love for self. And love for self causes us to do for self. And when we begin to do for ourselves, our other selves will be treated the same way. Thank y'all for listening. <laughs> enemy has always known this oh, yeah. and there's always been an attack on black love can we go through the attack for a second Come on, wait. before we close all the way out yeah. <clears throat> do you know attack number one came on black love before we ever came to the United States of America Gee. right Gee. do you know when they first came to Africa uh, y'all right Come on, wait. <laughs> Have you noticed that the Egyptians are recorded as being the best history keepers in the world? Come on with it. And if you look on the hieroglyph in the hieroglyphics on the pyramids or the metuneta, you will find not only the past, but you can even see the present and the future. That's right. On the pyramid walls. That's how great they were at keeping history. 
Now, with as accurate as they were at depicting the past, present, and even the future, you'll never be able to find on the, the in the hieroglyphics a brother on one knee shooting dice talking about what they hit for. <laughs> right. Right. Did you hear me? There's no record of a casino boat going down the Nile River. Right. You can't find on the pyramid walls a brother walking with a broken wrist. Right. Or a woman with another woman. Right. Not, not, not on the pyramid walls. No, no, you don't. You've never read or seen in any form of African history where one tribe took over another tribe's pyramid and turned into a trap house. Right. right. So, so there was no homosexuality. There was no pedophilia. There was no hustling. There was no drug dealing, no drug using. There wasn't no gambling going on. But now here we are in America. Right. And after 460 years of being Caucasianized, Westernized, and even Christianized, right. now all of a sudden, now we have become everything that I just said. Right. Technically, every black man and woman that's out here other than self could wear a label on their back that says, Made in America. Right. America makes Coca Cola, mm -hmm. Pepsi, Ford Chrysler Chevrolet, and Max Negroes, too. Right. It's an, Negro is an exclusively American made product. Come on, come on now. That's you right. say, but I was in Jamaica and I seen some niggas there over there too. And I've been to, I've been to Africa and some niggas over there too. They've been exported. Come on. But they're not originally native to that particular part. Negro is native only to America. Right. It is the product of the white man breaking us down while we've been in this country. Y'all still all right? So when they hired this man by the name of Napoleon, Come on. Come on. in the year 1798, his job was to go and destroy all of the images of black love. That's right. Did you hear me? So, so, so you will notice that when you look today, at any monument, figure, statue, or even writing on the pyramid, you'll always find the black man, but you'll look beside him and there's no black woman. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's not the way it originally used to be on the pyramids. Right. Come on. Every time you've seen a strong black man, right. Right. not behind. That's right. No, not underneath. But beside every strong black man has always been a strong black woman. Yeah, that's right. So the original images, you never could find Osiris without o Isis being right next to him. Right. You never could see Alafum without his wife Elida being right next to him. You never could find Osai without Aset being right next to him. And they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. These were husbands and wives of one another. But they destroyed every black female image with their man because they never wanted us to know that the real power base of the black nation is rooted in family love. Right. You know, the flip side of that, sisters, they never wanted you to recognize how powerful that you really were. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad came and he began teaching principles and laws that were designed to put you back in the right position. He said that a nation can rise no higher than its woman. That's right. He said that there's no such thing as a no good woman. That's right. Any no good woman was made that way by a no good man. He said that the black woman is not the second self of man, but she is the second self of God. He said the black woman is the first teacher, That's right. the first nurse, That's the right. first doctor. And then Farrakhan said it like this. He said, Mama is God in baby land. Come on. You me. You are the mother of civilization. That's right. Even today when they get to the basic nucleus of the DNA, Come they on. only found one entity in the universe. That's right that has that common uh, part in all DNA found in every person on the planet, and that is the black woman. That's right. You are the mother of all art, science, and civilization, and of all nations of people. But they knew how to attack black love by getting rid of that black female image. Napoleon then trained his cabinets 
on something called the Sphinx. Come on, talk about it. Anybody know something about the that's Sphinx? That's right, that's right. The Not Sphinx the sits at the base of the Great Pyramid Giza. The Pyramid Giza is 451 feet tall, 451 feet deep. It's made up of one million three and a half ton blocks of gold, granite, and marble covering a 13 and a half acre plot stacked mathematically precise north and south, east and west, yeah. not even deviating one square inch. And we, the black man and woman, we built it without John Deere. That's right. We oh. built it without Caterpillar. Right. We built it without a bulldozer or a crane. We knew, we knew how to use the psychokinesis or the telepathy of the strength of the mind. Amen. Well, we knew then how to put mind over matter. That's right. And we could bend objects, lift objects, move objects, create objects with the power of the mind. We knew then that all thoughts become words. That's right. All words become actions. All actions become habits. Habits form character. And character will dictate our destiny or our future. We knew that about the power of the mind back then. So after we built that pyramid, Giza, we put at the base of it the thing that they call now the Sphinx. The body of a lion. Right with the head of a black man on it. You say, oh, how you know it was a black man? Because his lips and nose is missing? That's right. You say, well, but in school they told me that, 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 that the, nips, the lips and the nose just kind of went away by way of natural weathering and, and, and just circumstances and wind and stuff. Well, hell, why come the claws are still looking good? Why come the ears are still all right? Another ship was Saints of Christ. Another ship was called the Grace of God. Well, wait a minute. I thought white folks told us that we was over there in Africa swinging from vines with bones in our nose, hollering ooga booga, and we were savages that didn't know nothing about God or religion. Well, if we didn't know nothing about God or religion, why did you come in the name of Jesus unless we already knew him? That's right. When we got on the ship for, for that, for that three-month journey, 9,000 miles, they stacked us shoulder to shoulder. The average height of the floor on the slave ship was only eight inches tall. They never allowed us to come to the deck to eat food or even relieve ourselves. So while we were stacked shoulder to shoulder like sardines in a can or roaches in a bottle, the only way we were able to eat, eat food is when food came through the cracks of the board and we leaned over and ate whatever came through the cracks. The only way we could drink water is when water came and was mucked over the floor and came through the cracks. But at the same time, we had food and water coming through the cracks. 
cracks, we never got to relieve ourselves, so urination and defecation came also through the cracks. So as we began to eat for three months, urination, defecation, slop and water mixed together, stacked like that, we began to lose our mind. Yes, sir. Right. So 200 million of us lost our lives in the middle passage alone. Do you know right now that the great white shark still travels the exact route of the slave, transatlantic slave trade? Do you know how they learned that route? Because they always knew food was coming. And the food was us. And we didn't just get thrown over the board dead, but if we were alive and we got on top of the deck, uh, we, had, we, we had the Harriet Tubman spirit. Yes, sir. That's right. Do you know what Harriet Tubman, just a good history lesson, do you know when Harriet Tubman first stood up to want to start the Underground Railroad? Yeah. She had a punk husband. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did y'all hear me? John Tubman with his punk behind. <laughs> she went and told her husband, look, baby, look, I got an idea. We got a route we can get some slaves free. And John Tubman said, Mass is going to kill us. I ain't, I ain't doing it. She said, well, I'm doing it anyway. And you won't believe what John Tubman is behind. Now, if you got a husband like this, you need to get rid of him as well. No, that's it. That's, that's not black love. Is it? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay, hold on. Rewind it. Dad, rewind the tape, man. We're going to fix this part. Don't get rid of him. Get rid of that. Be very encouraging. That's right. That's right. In whatever way you know how to be encouraging, to tell that man to develop some testicular fortitude. So, you understand what I'm trying to say? Send him to the Mars. Yeah. Cause men sharpen men like steel sharpen steel. Right, right. But John Tubman didn't say, "All right, I'm gonna go ahead and roll with you." You know what he had the nerve to tell him? If you do it, I'm telling on you. Now, if your husband tell you that, you can go ahead and get rid of him. <laughs> Keep that on tape. <laughs> but look at what Harriet Tubman told John. She said, well, you can do whatever you want to do. I've come to the realization that there's one or two things that I must have in my life. And that's either freedom or death. Yeah. Right. If I can't get freedom, I don't even want to leave. That's right. So Harriet Tubman went on and went to work. But she had to have a shotgun with her. And, no, and she was popping people. Right. No, Negroes. Right. <laughs> Serious. Right. Serious. Yeah, Big Bubba, strong. On the plantation, pulling the whole wagon by itself. Right, right. <laughs> but now he get out there, uh, I, I want to go back. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. She said, look, either you go forward or you got to die. Mm -hmm. I'm going back. Pow! Right. Yes, <laughs> right. You ain't giving up our route. <laughs> <laughs> right. See you, and I wouldn't want to be here. <laughs> But we had that same mindset when we were on the top of the ship. Sharks traveled the route because there were mothers that had children that would rather throw their babies overboard to be eaten by sharks than to come to America and be made slaves. There were people that would jump overboard to die rather than come here to be made a slave. We had the mindset either give me freedom or give me death. Then when we got to America doing slavery, they killed another 80 million of us. But guess what? The reason that they killed so many is because they murdered all of the adult slaves exactly. Exactly. and spared the children. Why? Because if you don't have access to any of your books, but you still have access to your mother, father, and your elders right. that had access to the books, you see what I'm going with this? See, we always said in Africa that it don't take a good mother and a father, but it takes a village to raise a child. So if the elders were on deck, even though I didn't have the book, they could teach me what the book said. But if I get rid of the books and the elders, 
then I can raise the new, new black man up to think that he's born to be a slave. Exactly. So we were in America and we developed in the first beginning of slavery a psychological condition that they now call premature cognitive commitment. Which means that if you train anything up as a baby in a certain way, that child or that baby or that infant when they become old will stay locked into that mold. That's right. They found that you can put fleas in a jar but, and put a piece of plastic over the jar while the fleas are newborns. And every time they jump and hit their heads, they will tell themselves, this is as high as I can jump. At a certain point, you can move the plastic and they'll never jump out the jar. You can put fish in an aquarium when they're right. first born, put glass in the middle, and every time they swim and hit the glass, they will say, this is as far as I can swim. At a certain point, you can remove the glass, and they won't ever swim any farther. Mm -hmm. You can take an elephant as a baby, tie him to a string, and every time he tries to break it and is unable to break it, he, he, he will say, I can't break the string. He can be a full-grown elephant strong enough not only to break the string, but pull the whole tent down. Yes. Right. But because his mind is messed up, he won't believe he can do it. So premature cognitive commitment is when the body is strong, but the mind is weak. Yeah. Premature cognitive commitment is when I get you as a baby and train you in a certain way that you don't even think you can do nothing. Black people have premature cognitive commitment. That's right. Can't nobody jump better than we can jump, run faster than we can run, dance better than we can dance. Come on now. That's right. We the physical gods of the planet. But when it comes time to thinking and planning and organizing and mobilizing, we're the weakest on the planet. Premature cognitive commitment. Black love was attacked because my mother is dead. My father is dead. My elders are dead. Y'all still with me? The reason I'm saying this, brothers and sisters, is because those of us that are fighting for our people Sometimes it gets very frustrating and disappointing in the struggle. Am I telling the truth? That's right. That's, right. That's right. And then at a certain point, you start saying, man, look, man, this is a waste of time. Black people ain't going to come together. That's right. I'm going to start doing what everybody else doing. I'm just going to start doing it for me. That's right. Because we ain't going to do nothing. But if we knew how we got in this condition, then we might have a little more patience with the process of resurrection. That's right. Right. We, we, we may be a little more understanding on why it's so hard for us to do what we need to do. Y'all still all right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't stop with the blowing of the sphinx or the killing of the image of the black woman next to our man, nor the murdering of the elders or the mothers and fathers bringing us into slavery. Then when we came here, then they began with education to break us down. Huh. Have, have you noticed that, that, that every time you look up and see the word black, or white as an adjective, white is always positive and black is always negative. That's right. <coughs> Check out your dictionary right now. If you pull up your dictionary and look up black, there's 120 definitions and over 70% of the definitions are negative. Mm -hmm. But you look up white and there's 134 and almost all of them are favorable. That's right. What is that doing that's programming us to think that black is bad and white is good? Right. If you get kicked out of a group, You've been blackballed. That's right. Is this the truth? Right. When the stock market crashed, it was called Black Monday. That's right. You selling illegal stuff, you on the black market. That's right. You set somebody up, you blackmailed them. That's right. You the misfit in your family, you the black sheep of the ball. Come on, that's right. Is that right? If you having bad luck, you behind the eight ball. That's right. And the eight ball is the black black ball, and the black ball is the last ball. That go right. in when you playing pool. In fact, if you knock the black ball in early, you automatically lose the game. Ain't it something that the game or uh, a pool looks something like the earth? That's right. A green Deep, felt man. just like the planet? Yeah. With all these different colored balls. Have you ever remembered? Do you remember back in the day when we used to put 75 cent in to play pool? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> See the OGs in the audience that remember you put 75 cent in now? Yes, sir. Can y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Now, when you put your 75 cent in, if you hit the stripes, if you hit the solids, if you even hit the eight ball, that ball go in and you can't get it back out. But if you scratch on the shot. That's right. Come on with it. 
The white ball still come back. Well, why did the white ball come back and all the other ones don't come back? It's because the white ball is the cue ball that's used to knock all other balls in their proper place. It's bigger with more weight than all the other balls. So what is the subliminal message of the game of pool? That white people are the dominators and the rulers that put everybody else where they're supposed to be. Come on, teach. Y'all still all right? Oh, yeah. That's an attack on black love. Have you noticed that in the old movies, the good guys wear white and the bad guys wear black? You go into a wedding, you wear bright colors, but you go into a funeral, you wear dark colors? Is this the truth? Yes, yeah, right. Ha ha have you noticed that, have you ever went and got them little snacks, them, them, them little devil food, them little devil, I mean, little Debbies? Excuse me. <laughs> little Debbies. <laughs> when you go get little Debbies, when you want to buy angel food cake, White. Angel food cake is white cake with white ice. That's right. Devil food cake. <laughs> Chocolate cake with what? Chocolate. See, see, we don't realize that this is a subliminal message that's promoting self-hatred. It's an attack on black love. That's right. Right. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. No. So if the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, brothers and sisters, says to us that knowledge of self produces love for self, and love for self will make us do for ourselves. And since our brother, sister, this is our other self, then we will treat each other right if we know and love ourselves. Right. Then one thing that you and I must do is engage in self-study and teach our babies about people that look like them that accomplished great feats in the past. Right. Did, did, did y'all hear me? That's right. It's something about seeing somebody that look like you yeah, that's right. do something great that makes you begin to use your spiritual peripheral vision and you begin to say to yourself, if they can do it, so can I. Yeah. Did, did you know that our children start school the same way white children do? When the mother drops off the black child and when the white mother drops off the white child, both of the children are crying, holding on to mama's leg. They don't want to leave, do they? Come on, mamas, help me out. <laughs> they crying, no, I don't want to go. Especially you talking about preschool. First day of preschool, they don't want to let go. But you looked over and you seen the white woman and her baby was doing the same thing. And then both of them walked away. Black and white child did it. Real slow, real timid, head down. <laughs> Sniffling, come on. But you notice that as that black and white child both began to matriculate through 12 years of school, you notice that, that as the white child and the black child are moving through school, they're learning about George Washington, a white man. Thomas Jefferson, a white man. Right. Plato, a white man. Right. Aristotle, Socrates, Thales, Hypothagoras, white men. And, and as you notice, you, you notice that as the, the, the black and the white child begin learning about great whiteness, right. that the little white boy began stalking, walking straight, uh -huh. chest out. Yeah. And by the time they leave school, they walk out of school with confidence ready to conquer the known world. Yes, but the little black child never learned about nobody that looked like them. Yeah. So not only whenever they leave school is they head down, but their pants is down too now. Yeah. Right. Am I telling the truth? Right. Do you know there's a man by the name of Robert Collier who wrote a book called The Secret of the Ages in 1926? This is considered the mother book of all self-help gurus. You've heard of the book called The Secret? It's a spin-off of The Secret of the Ages. Think and Grow Rich, a spin-off of Secret of the Ages. Almost all of the self-help books you read is just a recooked, respoken version of something he said in Secret of the Ages. Robert Collier says in his book, Secret of the Ages, that education is three-fourths encouragement That's right. and only one-fourth information. That's right. uh. You're not hearing me. So that means that, that if education is three-fourths encouragement, one-fourth information, if your black child is fed all about great white people, yep. do you know that in order for you to compare yourself to someone, you have to have something in common with them? Yeah. 
And if you don't have something in common by which you can spark a comparison, your comparison doesn't feed your desire, and your desire doesn't feed your will, and you never become what you're looking at. Did, did y'all hear me? So, so to learn about black people when you are black gives you three-fourths encouragement. But to learn about great white people, you leave with information. Right. Meaning you only got 25% of the power that comes from education. Come on with it. I wonder what would happen if our black babies learned about King Tut. That's right. Nefertiti. That's right. Shaka Zulu. Come on with it. Queen and Zeke. Right. Imhotep. Right. Malcolm X. Right. Marcus Elijah Muhammad. That's right. I mean, when our babies walked out, they would walk out of school with the chest out, head held out, ready to be a conqueror of the known world. Because they would have self-knowledge. Y'all yep. still all right? Yeah. Can we do a crash course real quick on yeah. self-knowledge? Yes. Did you know it was a black man named Granville Woods that invented the electric railway system by which the subway runs? Yeah. Did you know it was a black man that invented the subway? Did you know it was a black man named Benjamin Banneker that designed the blueprint That's for right. Washington, D.C.? Right. And built the first operating clock in the United States of America. A black man did that. Did you know it was a black man named Norman Reliant that invented the first sugar distillery? Did you know it was a black man that invented the fountain pen? Come on. The toilet? Come on. The typewriter? The elevator? Right. The anti-aircraft gun? The egg beater, bottle caps? Lawn sprinkler, window cleaner, the cell phone, the light bulb. Right. This is black people that did right. this. Did you know it was a black man named Daniel Williams that performed the first successful heart operation? Then it was a black man named Charles Drew Drew that revolutionized plasma research and built the first blood plasma bank that all other ones are built on right now? Did you know it was a black man named George Washington Carver who was felt held in virtual slavery to the Ford family that developed 300 uses for the peanut and 118 uses for the sweet potato other than eating them. Right. I said other than eating them. Because eating them ain't good for you. The Honorable Elijah Mama said every time you eat nuts it takes five years off of your life. And if you look at the sweet potato, it, 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 as you know potatoes are, listen to me, potatoes are the weakest vegetable on the planet. They lack the most nutrients of anything that you can eat. In fact, in fact, don't, if you look at the sweet potato, it got like hair fibers in it. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever had hair in their drain before. <laughs> That's what, what happens when hair gets in the drain in the tub? Clog, clog it up. It clogs. Oh, okay. What happens when? Y'all understand? That's right. right. But that was a black man that did all of that. Did you know it was a black woman that invented the ironing board? A black woman that invented the nursery chair, the medicine tray. The siren and the horn light indicator, the digital toaster, the hoisting mechanism used by all mechanic shops, the T-top on cars, home security systems. Did you know it was a black woman that came up in the laboratory with the medical formula for ibuprofen? Mm. Come on with it. Why are you shocked? <laughs> the black woman is the natural pain reliever for a hard-working black man already. Brothers and sisters, the more we learn about people that look like us that did great things in the past, the more we begin to suggest to ourselves, if they can do it then, then I can do it now. Right. Are y'all with me? Right. So the foundation of black love matter is black knowledge got to matter. Come on, that's right. And the more we know about ourselves, the more we're going to love ourselves. Do you know that knowledge of self and great black people in history gives us what you would call confidence? That's right. But there's something a little bit higher than confidence that you get when you learn about great black people in the scripture. Y'all not, not hearing me. Come on. I heard you. Did, 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 did. See, black history will give you confidence. But when you learn that Abraham went to Egypt, and when he was in Egypt, they mistake, must, mistook him for being an Egyptian. And Egypt in, in, in Greek is Aeptus, which means lands of black and burnt skinned people. Then now you start saying, well, Abraham was a black man. 
That's right. Did you know when Moses, he said he stuck his hand into the bosom of the Lord, and when he took it out, it was turned white? That's right. But if it was turned white, it must have went in black. Did you know Job said, my skin is black? Do you know Solomon, the son of David, said, I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem? Well, well, wait a minute. Didn't Jesus say that he was the seed and offspring and root of David? But if Solomon is the seed of David and he's black and Jesus is also the seed of David, what is Jesus? Huh? Didn't Jesus say I had hair like lamb's wool? Right. Feet like grass burned in the oven? Right. Lamb's wool is nappy hair. Grass already brown, you burning, you know it's going to be black. Whenever Joseph and Mary hid Jesus from King Herod and the armies, they did not hide him in Italy. Right. They didn't hide him in Rome or Germany. They hid him in Egypt. Well, if Egypt is the land of the black and burnt skinned people, and another word for hide is camouflage, meaning when you hide or camouflage, you're trying to blend in with the color of the environment. So when the armies in the jungle, they wear green because it matches the trees. Right. When they're in the desert, their fatigues are beige because it matches the sand. Right. When they're on the night mission, they wear black because it matches the darkness of the night. Uh -huh. When they're in the snow, they wear white fatigues because it matches the snow. Right. Well, if you're going to camouflage in the land of black and burnt skinned people and don't get caught, you must be black and burnt skinned too. Right. Jesus is a black man. But to learn about great black people in scripture, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad takes it to a whole nother level. Yes, he, he said every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. Right. That don't give you confidence, that gives you right. God for this. Yeah, that's right. This is the highest level of power that you can operate on the psychological level. Right. Right. So brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah that here in Dayton, Ohio, Beautiful that we will begin feeding our minds on the knowledge of self. That's right. And if we continue to feed our minds on the knowledge of self, we will produce love for ourselves. That's right. And if we start loving ourselves, we're going to start doing right by ourselves. See, you can't love yourself and still eat pork chops. Oh. <laughs> you can't, uh -huh. you can't love oh. Oh. No, that's not love. You can't love yourself and still smoke cigarettes. Huh? You can't love yourself and still smoke crack. Right. That's right. I, I seen, Brother Tyrone, my word is bond. I seen the other day a Bentley Phantom. Do you know how much a Bentley Phantom costs? Over $300,000. Hold on. Guess where it was at? At Taco Bell. Oh, no. <laughs> did, you, did you hear what I just said? I seen a Bentley Phantom parked at Taco Bell. I said, that's got to be some negativity. Being Taco Bell. <laughs> I know sure ain't no white man at Taco Bell. For <laughs> and when you pop open the gas tank of a luxury vehicle, I was discouraged. I bought a luxury vehicle and I was getting it for gas mileage and cheaper gas and all that. And it told me about eco this and eco that. And I was like, sweet, that is, I'll save X amount of money and payment will be more, but the gas will be cheaper. And so, all right, sweet. But I went to pump gas in and I opened it up and there was a warning. <laughs> right. It said, only takes premium fuel. I said, huh? Regular 219 and premium 299? I didn't believe the sticker. I called the man that sold me the car. I said, hey, uh, I just opened up the thing, the gas thing, and it says only takes premium fuel. Is that true? He said, yes, that's true. I said, man. <laughs> but I start thinking about it. Right. Good teacher. A luxury vehicle mm. has to run off of premium fuel, oh. which is a cleaner form yeah. of fuel. Come on, good teacher. But, but what is the black man and woman as a vehicle? Mm. Are we not a luxury vehicle for God? Yeah. 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 So what kind of fuel should we be putting in this vehicle? So self-love means you got to eat right. Right. Self-love meaning you gotta treat yourself right. right. Yeah. Self-love meaning you gotta be sane, you gotta be sober. That's right. 
Would y'all would y'all agree with me? Yes. 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 If we really love ourselves, then we would want to shop with our brother before we shop with another, even if we got to pay a little bit more. That's right. Come on. That's right. You say, but Walmart guy has it for two seventy seven. And my brother's selling it for $2.99. Well, buy it from your brother anyway and spend an extra 22 cents. At the end of the day, you're helping somebody that looks like you. And, 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 and don't you know, brothers and sisters, that a dollar remains in the Asian community 28 to 30 days before it leaves? Do you know a dollar stays in the Jewish community 17 days before it leaves? And among the Hispanics, it stays 14 days before it leaves their community? But in the black community, you got your seatbelt on? Yeah. We're not ready. Okay. Let's strap in, please. A dollar in the black community lasts three to six hours. Uh -huh. okay. Hold on a minute. That means if you got a direct deposit right. on Friday morning when you were at work, before you got off, the white man got all your money. <laughs> That's bad math. They, they say a dollar circulates in the Jewish community seven or ten times before it leaves. But in the black community, a dollar only circulates one-tenth of one time. Can you even call that circulate? Because no. circulate means make a circle. Right. That ain't a whole lap. That's just barely a 50-meter dash. It just ran and bounced. No, but if we love, if black love really matters, we'll shop with our brother and sister before we shop with another. That's right. That's is true. this okay? That's right. If black love matters, then as men in our community, even if we don't have children going to school, we would show up to make sure our babies can get on the bus without a parent. That's right. That's right. That's right. If black love matters, we will go in our neighborhood and find the elderly that need their trash taken out. Right. Find the elderly that need their leaves raked or their grass cut. And we would come and do it for them and even not even charge them a dime if black love matters. That's right. Come on. What do y'all think? Come on. If black loves matter, we would see trash in the neighborhood and pick it up even though we didn't throw it down. That's right. Right. Yeah. We was in the hood the other day and after we told the brother, I said, what are you doing? I said, I'm picking up the trash. He said, man, you didn't put that out there, man. No, leave that there. I said, no, sir, brother. I'm, 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 I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. He said, man, I ain't look. I mean, I like y'all and everything, but I ain't picking up nobody else's trash. I ain't doing all that. I said, well, brother, I want you to remember that there's something called wind and trash that somebody else threw down the street. When the wind blows, it's going to be in your yard in a few days. <laughs> so whether we like it or not, we together in this thing. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to be mad while I'm picking up the trash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to be looking around for anybody I think might have been the one that threw it down. <laughs> hey, Leah, come here, little brother. Come here. Man, do not, man, and do. If I catch you throwing this out again, we're going to have a problem. Because this, I know, I listen, I don't eat flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> this is not mine. <laughs> I can tell you eat flaming hot Cheetos. Come on. <laughs> if black loves matter, we'll clean up the neighborhood. Does this make sense? If black love matters, then we will look beyond religious labels Come and on, denominations. Man. Right. And if we follow these few simple codes in Dayton, Ohio, we can make this city the model city for black That's love right. and black life that right. really matters. Yeah. Thank you for listening to our peace. Yeah. I'm going to make